So welcome everyone to this firm. Um, today we're going to be looking at using AI as your Excel or Google Sheets superpower. And um, for those of you that haven't heard about it, we're going to be looking at a thing called ChatGPT and how you might use that to um, bolster your uh, your Excel skills, your Google Sheets skills. It's been in certain parts of the online world, it's been going viral. People are talking about it all over the place. But just in case you haven't heard about it, we'll do a quick recap of what it is. But most of the time will be spent in ChatGPT um, doing things which are both um, interesting and sometimes a little odd. So I was thinking about this and I wanted to describe what ChatGPT was in three words. And the three words I came up with are remarkable, scary, and essential. It truly is remarkable what this thing can do. And by the end of this, I'm sure that you will agree. It's also quite scary what it can do. And I think it's scary in terms of what it, just the change it's going to make in our industry, in all industries over the course of the next few months and years. I mean, short, short term really. And it's going to become essential. Um, it's going to be something that we all use, I suspect. Um, it's it's just a, it's a it's a phenomenon in the um, in the world. I would compare it to the um, the rise of search or even the rise of the internet itself, given some of the things we do. But judge for yourself when we see this. But a few words of warning about ChatGPT. First of all, it's currently free, but may not always be. You can today register with an account. So you can register an account with ChatGPT and within minutes or within half a minute be doing everything that you see me doing here today. And that is all currently free. Um, but it can be slow or unavailable, which may cause us some issues today. It certainly caused me some issues in the preparation for this presentation. Um, and so it can tell you, oh, you've got to come back later or we're overloaded or it's running slowly and takes a long time. So it, bear with us if that happens whilst we're um, in the in the presentation. Um, and it can give very convincing but incorrect answers. And we'll see some of those as we go through today, hopefully. But always be careful about what you, you see. And they also give a warning that it can give you sort of offensive answers or unpleasant answers. So uh, hopefully there'll be none of those today. But maybe uh, you'll come across those in your own exploring. Um, and this is only the start. So today, what we're seeing is ChatGPT3, which was released in November, which apparently has something like 157 billion parameters in its model. Um, they're talking about soon, maybe sometime, sometime this year, maybe soon this year, chat GPT, not char GPT, but chat GPT4, which is going to have like 100 trillion parameters, which is like 500 times the power. And if you think what you're seeing today and think about it multiplied by 500, that is a, a, an interesting thought. Um, and there are rumors of Microsoft increasing its 1 billion stake in the underlying um, um, company, OpenAI, from 1 billion to 10 billion. In fact, I think they're doing a deal about getting exclusivity. So I would um, expect this to start appearing inside the Microsoft Office products probably sometime this year, um, um, which is will, will make life interesting again. And um, just to sort of make a prediction about all of this, uh, which I hinted at in the last slide, um, I think in the future we will use this technology ourselves more than we use search today. So I think how many times you go on a day and search on the web, um, I think we will use this more than that and it will give us better answers. It'll probably be integrated with search technology and that future could be this year. So it's it's just, it, it's, it's remarkable, it's moving very quickly. Um, I just read today that Google and DeepMind are saying they're gonna have a competitor out sometime this year. And this really is running very quickly. So what is ChatGPT? Well, let's go and have a look at it if I can find it amongst my windows here. Um, here, so what I might try and do, I see this, this is where we're going to run into trouble. Um, there we go, so I'm in. This is the, the chat GPT interface. I've logged in um, and I can ask it some questions. So I'm going to, first question I'm going to ask it is, um, what are you? Um, and there's a pause while it thinks about it. So it says, I'm a large language model trained by OpenAI. I can understand, generate text, answer questions and complete other language text. Um, so then the obvious next question to ask about that is um, what is a large language model? If I can get that working, there we go. What is a large language model? So it comes back and says it's a type of artificial intelligence that's trained on a massive data set designed to understand, navigate natural language, uh, generate natural languages, often used for language translation, summarization, question answering. They're large because they require a significant amount of compute, computational memory and power to train and are based on deep learning techniques. Um, so 
and the interesting thing is that the, these conversations have context. So each individual conversation has no context, but inside one conversation, you see I've got lots of different conversations I've been running on the side here. Each conversation has um, some context. Um, next question I might ask is, um, are you always correct? Because we had that issue we were saying earlier, and so it comes back and it'll say, no, it's not always correct. My response is based on the training. So all, it's, all this is doing is trained on a whole bunch of information that's essentially been pointed out on the internet and it's learned patterns from it. It's a pattern recognition thing, but given that, it's, it's almost even more remarkable what it does given that's the case. But it's saying here, because it was it's trained, it's based on the information available at the time of the training. And so and we'll see later that some of this knowledge is out of date. And so I may not always provide the correct answers, but I'll always do my best to help. Um, so, um, the interesting thing, one thing you'll note here is that when we um, write a conversation, it uses itself to generate a summary of the conversation as the title here. So these are sort of natural language generated titles, which is quite a nice sort of circular thing here. But all of this could be sort of, it's sort of what are you is not search, but what's a large language model you might get out of search. So, um, oh, there we go, we've got a network error. That's because too many people are on probably the US are waking up to, to start using it. So what I'm going to do, I've got a pre one that I had earlier, um, that just in case that happened. And so what I'm going to do is show you that it's not like search. So let's ask it a ridiculous question that you could never find on search. And so that's going to, I'm as a, as a sort of a hat tip to one of my favorite all time shows, Blackadder, I want them to tell me about Donald, the great Viking leader who ordered a hundred battle helmets with the horns on the inside. So it says, I'm sorry, I couldn't find any information about Donald who ordered the battle helmets, but here's some information about the Vikings. Again, that's sort of a bit like search, but this is where something interesting really happens. I said, well, tell me a story about Donald anyway. And so it says, once upon a time, there's a great Viking leader called Donald. He's known for his cunning and bravery. Um, one day he had a great idea ordered. It's, it's the amazing thing about this is it's generated a sensible piece of text bringing in ideas that weren't in the question, that are, that are completely in, um, in context, um, and has um, and sort of from that day on, the horn helmets, horn helmets, the horns on the inside became a symbol of Donald's leadership and bravery. These people remember him as a great leader, always thought outside the box. I mean, where did the phrase outside the box come from in all of this? I mean, it's a remarkable piece of writing just to generate almost out of nothing. And it, funnily, at the end, it says, however, as I mentioned before, the story is fictional and I couldn't find any historical rockers of a Viking leader called Donald or any historical reference to a Viking leader ordering a thousand battle helmets with the horse on the inside. Well, you couldn't there. So it's, a, it's, it's at once incredibly clever um, and also really a bit stupid. But I guess the question then is, um, what's all this got to do with squirrel and spreadsheets? Well, the answer is that amongst the questions, you can you literally ask any question you want and it'll come up with a, a credible answer. One of the questions you can ask are things about spreadsheets. And so that's what we're going to, to look at now. And as I said before, it's a bit flaky and to do this without having pre-recorded it would have been um, really not tenable. And so um, what I've done is recorded a session so you can see it in more in, in, in sort of unedited. So what you're about to see is highly edited for time um, not for content, but just it allows us to to get through this in a sensible amount of time and avoid the glitches with the system. So, um, a second. So if we start here, right. So we've got them. Um, so we log in. So I said you can just come onto OpenAI, click to um, to try it. Once you've registered, you can log uh, in your account here. And you get into that interface that you that you saw before. So here we are inside, and I'm going to ask it now an Excel style question. And the question I'm going to ask is, how can I add the cells in the first five by five range in a sheet? And it says you can use the formula to add the cells in a sheet. In this case, you want to use sum, and there's the there's the formula sum a1 to e5 is the formula, it's a specific formula that you would use. Um, it says you can also, it gives you more more information. You can also use sum if, if you want to use the cells in a specific range that have a cr particular criteria. Um, and um, so they're saying you can add all the cells that are greater than 50. Um, so it's, 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 it's given me a, it's generated. If I didn't know how to add the first five by five range in the sheet, there it's generated that. Obviously um, a bit trivial, but we can ask it maybe, um, if I do this again, sorry. 
lost control of my video. <laughs> is there another way? Yes, there are other ways. One way is to do an auto sum button in the ribbon. Another way is to use the sum if, ifs function to do multiple criteria. So it's, it's so you can always, as I said, it understands the um, uh, the context of all of this. So the fact that I've asked it about a particular function, you know, a particular formula I want, I can now say, is there another way? I don't need to say, is there another way of doing the first five cells? It understands the context. And you can refine, um, so you can refine, you can say, well, I didn't quite mean that, I meant something else, add some more details. And so you can, it can it, in a conversation, which really does um, add to the, the power of what's going on here. And so then, um, one of the things that we often do in Squirrel is make things happen when something toggles in the spreadsheet. So I thought, well, it's a typical Squirrel thing to do. So I asked ChatGPT, is there a formula which will toggle this value in a cell? And this is interesting because it came up with a way, first of all, the way that I would always do it, but then it also came up with a way that I had not thought of before, which is quite interesting. I probably wouldn't use it, but it's always good. So you can see the, the, the classic way for that is if A1 equals zero, then one out of zero. If you've seen any of the demos that I've done over the last couple of years with Squirrel, you will have seen that many times. Um, sorry, I keep pushing the wrong button to, um, there we go. So, it, and it explains how that's doing this. It said you can, and it's it added a little extra here. So you can also use the if function. So if something's even or not even, you can use mod two. You quite why it's throwing that weird detail in. But this is the one I like, you can use the not function. So not A1 will toggle from true to false. I mean, obviously that will work. I just hadn't thought of it. So it's a nice sort of extra, um, an extra idea that, that it throws up. So not only does it answer the specific question, maybe give you something, but might give you extra ideas. And you can always say, is there another way? Is there another way until you get an answer that you that, that you want? Um, but there, that's all relatively relatively simple. But one of the formulas, as well as VLOOKUP, that I always find I have to think hard about and maybe go to a bit of pencil and paper is uncompounding intra growth. So here I've asked it, if you have two values which are five years apart in cells A1 and A2, what's the Excel formula to calculate the annual compound growth rate? And so you ask it that and it says, to calculate that, what you want is this formula here which is A1 over A2 to the power of a fifth minus one, which is exactly the right formula, one that I would use, but I would sort of rack my brains coming up with it or I hadn't used it for a while. But then it goes on to explain why that's the case. This formula is annual compound growth. This is the start value. This is what you're doing. It's a period of five years. So it's helping you under, it's not just giving you the formula, but it's explaining why why it works, which is it's obviously better than just giving you it. Um, and a bit of a warning there, Important the growth rate has to be constant, so it's, it's it's just so much extra over and above just the formula. Now that's one interesting way of doing. It, but let's let's think about the other way. Now, let's say I came across that formula in my spreadsheet or a spreadsheet that someone handed me. I didn't know what it did, so I can do the reverse. So I can um, I can ask ChatGPT, what does the formula? What does that formula do? So I say conversation to conversation has no context. So it's not using the context of what I asked it to do. This is a fresh question and it's doing this from scratch. And what it says, and what it could say here is what well, it divides A1 by A2 and raises it to the fifth, to the, the, uh, raises it to a fifth and minus is one, but that would be totally useless. But what it does say is it says, calculates the annual compound growth. It understands what that does and sort of, and it, and sort of explains how it does that, which is, just it's just it's mind boggling really. But then I thought another way of using it, so that's for formulas which are sort of like, are quite technical. But then I thought, here's a formula. I, I said, actually a formula I found in a spreadsheet I was working on as I was thinking about this. And that this is a simple formula, but actually if you, if you look at it straight away, you're sort of like, well, what does it do? Again, just kind of this formula calculates the percentage change between two ranges of cells, the first part and explains what it does and how it does it. So it's sort of, um, it's, I mean, I, yeah, I could work out what that does, but I think, are they the same ranges? What's doing it? Or if it's a slightly longer one, it's just f fascinating that it can tell me in sensible sort of human terms what that does. Now, you may think, ah, yeah, but I, it'll take me longer to cut it into G chat GPT and start up a thing and then do that. But what's going to happen is at some point in the future, not such a distant future, you're going to have a right click option inside Excel or Google Sheets. In fact, there are places, there are, we'll see at the end, there are tools that allow you to do this today where you can say, explain this to me. 
And so this is going to become a natural part of our workflow much sooner, I think, than we than we realize. So and now, interestingly, let me see if I can go. Um, so, yes, it's, um, sorry, I've gone too far back. Let me go down a bit. So now another question, which I posed of it, is how can I find some of the top five values in a range in Excel? And again, this, this exposed for me actually a function that I've very in, inconsistently used and, and have not really used many times. And it's this one here, the large function. So it said if the, some of the top five values in a range, use sum if, and it's, this is the range, and then it says greater than or equal to, and it's concatenating the value it gets back using large. And large gives you the x biggest value. So in this case, the fifth biggest value in this range. It then concatenates that onto the greater than or equals and uses that as the condition over the sum if. Interestingly, it doesn't need to have, it would work without this at the end. It doesn't need to have the extra sum range because it will automatically run, do this by, this still works, but this is to a certain extent um, um, redundant. But nonetheless, it says it's interesting that it comes up with. And again, it explains what it's doing. And it's so you can change the range or the number of values that you want and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's, Again, so these are uh, these are examples. I mean, you can throw almost anything at it, as we'll see. It sometimes gets it wrong, but more often than not, it gets it right and it gives you some interesting stuff. Now, that's all. They've all currently been quite specific about cells, and so I've got something in this cell, and I've got something in that cell. I thought I'd try something that's a little more abstract. So here I've got. I've said I have data about ten products in the first three columns of a spreadsheet. The columns contain product name, unit cost, and unit sold. Can I ask you some questions about this? And so I said, yes, you can ask me questions about your data. So then I can say, okay, in Excel, how can I get the value for overall total sales? And it says the formula calculator is, is to multiply the unit cost by the unit. So it's worked out that the total sales is unit cost by unit sold, which is remarkable, and then sum up for all the products. And um, it says use the sum product to do that, and there is the there is the sum product given what I've told it. Quite why it's saying B2 to B11 rather than B1 to B10, I don't know, but again, you've got to be watching out for the accuracy of it, and it explains why that. So there it says it assumes your data starts in B2. Now I say, how could I get the unit sales for the product banana? Um, and again, it does something quite remarkable. It understands that that's in the first column, um, and so it says sum if in A1 to A11, um, look at bananas and add up the values in C1 to C2. Now, I, the interesting thing about this, what I was expecting it to do is I'd said, I've got, co I've got products in the first column. In my, my, in my mind, it was like one product, one line per product. But actually what it's given me is, is a formula. And so I was expecting to do a lookup or something like that. But actually it, this is correct because there could be repeats in that product column. And so this is adding up all the, all the rows that have bananas in them and giving me back the, the sum of the, the unit sales, which is, um, again, so it, it caught something that I was sort of essentially misthinking about. But as well as formulas, you can do, say, format strings. So here, I want what's the format string to show a value of three decimal places and could a include a thousand separator. And here, it's given me the correct, exactly what I want, which is the, this um, format string here. Um, but also explained in each of these what they're doing. This is character. It's only been, is there's a non-zero value. These are always there. This is the decimal point. This is the character for a thousand. So it's, 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 it's educational as well as just delivering me the the, the function. And then I, one of my favorite ones is the ability to be able to truncate something to show it in millions. Um, and what about showing a value of 1.38 in millions? And it says, that's what you need. And it's exactly what you need. Um, and it's these two commas and the following M that do that. And it explains that sort of right, but not quite right. So I'll show you where it goes wrong. It says, um, so first of all, there's this issue here where it, there should be an M in there. So the M is used to indicate the literal M. It's not, that, that's a bit wrong. And the other thing is it describes this, um, these two commas. Each of those commas divides the result by a thousand. 
So it says the character is used to divide the number by 1 million. It's not. Both of them together divide by 1 million because each divides it by 1,000. And the second comma is used to indicate the scale factor, which is just nonsense. So it's interesting that it authoritatively says this is what's happening, but actually it's not right. So as I say, care is warranted. I, I, as I said earlier, this is early days. I suspect these things will get better and better and become more and more flawless. But for the time being, um, we'll, we need to do that. Now, this is an interesting one. This is this really sort of bent my mind. Give me a formula that, to return true in Excel if all the characters are digits and false otherwise. And so it says in Excel, you can use the is number and some product functions. I'm thinking that there's no way that you can use the is number and some product functions to do this. But hey, presto, here's an example. Now, not only does it use is product, is number and some product, but it uses row and indirect and len as well. Then it goes on to try and explain what it's doing. And I, even with the explanation, I, have, I, I basically have no idea what that formula is doing to the point where I was so sure it just had to be making it up and it was not going to work. So what I, what I did is I went into Excel and here is that formula. And lo and behold, if I say that it's, it's working on A1, if A1 has all digits in it, is true. If there are any non-digits, it's false. So this genuinely does what I asked, even though I, I'm, I'm sure I could sit down and rethink really about it. But genuinely, as I speak, I have no real idea how that works. But it came up with it for me. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's um it's a it's a fascinating thing. Um, so I said, is there a simpler way to do this? And it says yes. But unfortunately, the simpler way is not good. So the simpler way is just use is number, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted if they're digits. So that would, like minus 20 would give me true if that was the case. Um, and that's not what I wanted because it's got a minus sign in it or 3.4 would, but not all of the characters are digits. What we're looking at here is a string that just has digits. So that's actually wrong. Um, and it, it sort of gets it wrong. It says it's important to note this formula only check the input is a number and not if it's only digits. So it's basically saying here's an answer, but it's not an answer, but there we go. Um, but then the final one on this section is interesting because um, what I said then was, how about using a regular expression to do this? And it says, yes, it's possible to use a regular expression to check all the characters or strings and digits in Excel. And this is what you would do. And you'd use regmax, regex max. And here's the, the way you could do it. Explains the regular expression. It's a lovely answer, um, except for the fact that the regex max function does not exist in Excel. Well, actually it does, it's part of Excel VBA, but if you try and use it in a formula in Excel, it won't let you. Interestingly, it is a function in Google Sheets and it is also a function in Squirrel. So this answer will work in Squirrel and Google Sheets, but not in Excel, despite the fact that I asked it to be for Excel. So again, got to be careful for um, what, it's, what it's telling you um, and what it gets right and wrong. And interestingly, it says there, it's important to note that it's almost, as I said, it can give very convincing but wrong answers. It's important to note this formula requires the use of Office 365 Excel, which includes the new dynamic array functions like regex, regex match. Regex match is not a dynamic array function. It does not appear in Office 365. So it's almost sort of like being over, it's, it's, it's confidently shouting its, um, its wrongness from the bottom of the page. But um, but, but nonetheless, as I say, the formula does work in Squirrel and Google Sheets. And so then you can ask it opinions, which is better, XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP? And it gives you a nice sort of thing about why you would, basically why you would use XLOOKUP rather than VLOOKUP, but VLOOKUP is still um, much, much, much used. Which is better, Excel or Google Sheets? And it gives you the pros and cons of these, um, basically saying for desktop stuff, it's good for, Excel, but if you want to collaborate, then online is good for Google Sheets. Um, so yeah, interesting one there. And so that's just, I mean, just a fraction of the things you might want to do with this in terms of formulas and, um, and it, you, you, I've, I've seen people online getting it to write bits of VBA in, um, in, um, for Excel. Um, you might want, as we saw, we could do format strings and, and all that sort of that sort of stuff. So, but there's so much you could do with it. Got to be careful that you don't get the wrong answer. Um, but you, um, um, because it, it can, oh, sorry, I've done this again. 
and sort of ah yeah now here's an interesting thing we got the situation where when i was recording this it said too many requests in an hour but what i can do is i can go up here and try again immediately so so well actually i'll try it again immediately here we'll see that in a minute. so it's I mean, yeah it was getting quite confused so that that can happen so i came back in a little while and said right this is what i'm what i wanted it to do here is act like a reference manual i'll give you excel function names one at a time can you briefly tell me what you're doing what they're doing and a one line example of each and so i said some product and out it comes with a nice definition of some product with an example um, I then tried, what was the second one I tried? Um, well, one thing to note there is that's two, two times three. When it's, when it's like six times seven, that's actually two star three, but it uses the algebraic notation. It wrongly uses the algebraic notation of just putting things next to each other. So that's actually two, th two times three plus five plus four. So again, there are some, some rough edges on it. So then here you'll notice that I, um, the X lookup, um, it, it's done again a nice definition of it it said try again in an hour but actually what i did is and it happens again here when i do work days so it's going to say right too many hours if i go to here you'll see a sort of a little button that says i can edit it i edit it and then try again and and this is in real time i didn't cut this out so you'll see here i go there click save and submit and it works so it doesn't always have to wait an hour i think that's a spurious message um, but so, so there are ways around. You keep trying, it, it, it will eventually let you back in. Then the interesting final one here, choose rows, which again, I had to submit a couple of times. Um, it says, I'm sorry, but choose rows is not a built-in function to Excel, and it might be a custom or a typo. Well, the interesting thing about that is choose rows is a function in Excel. Um, as you can see here, choose rows, just you can, from the range, it's a dynamic array formula. Um, that takes that and it's taking rule one and three, which is those two up there. The reason why ChatGP doesn't know it is because it was trained on a body of knowledge that was sort of in 2021 and choose rows is um, a function that was released in 2022. So again, one of the limitations of it is it only understands things on the basis that has been trained. And so things that are new or immediate, um, it doesn't, it doesn't understand so well. And so, um, but that will probably change as the models get more powerful. They'll like search used to be sort of a bit stale and now it's sort of almost instant. It's the same sort of thing with them um, with this. I think it will get better, but for now you've got to be aware of the training set and or well, the time scale that it was trained on. And then just for a bit of fun um, to, to finish off with, I thought I'd ask it to write a limerick about an Excel error. So it came back with a once with an error so dire, it caused data to jump like a wire. With a simple debug, all the numbers were hugged and the spreadsheet was once more a square. No idea what that means. It's it's amusing because it's gibberish. And you can say, try again. So it try again. An Excel sheet had a formula so sly it caused errors to multiply high. But with a quick fix, a quick find and replace, all the mis mistakes were chased and the data was accurate by and by. <laughs> so yeah, fair enough. Um, and then I sort of said, going back to the, the stories, can you write an amusing cautionary tale about a mistake in a spreadsheet that would lead to dire results? And it talks about the young, in, in a, land far away young intern named tim who's given the task and interestingly it says um he made a he, in one of his formulas he accidentally used the wrong function causing all of the figures in the spreadsheet to be multiplied by 100 that's i'm not sure that function that was but anyway because down he was devastated he was fired and struggled to find work for years the moral of the story is always triple check your work especially when it comes to important spreadsheets um and i said well make it a bit shorter so then it wrote me a limerick when i sort of so it, about tim the intern and the mistakes he made and then i sort of said no i want it as a story and so then it wrote a little story and this is an interesting if, if, quite outside of excel if you've got a piece of text and you want to make it shorter but still have the same meaning type it in here say cut this in half and keep its meaning and it'll do a really good job of that and actually so obviously you're probably not going to want a limerick or a story about that tim and his um his issues but Here's a real a real thing, and people are using uh, ChatGB a lot for marketing, writing copy. So here I've asked it, I've written a three-year financial planning model, write an excited email to my boss telling her how good it is. And again, what does it say? Exciting news about our financial, dear boss's name, I'm thrilled to share with you, I've completed the three-year planning model. It's looking great, it takes account of all of this. I'm excited to present it to you. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit of an over the top because I asked it to be excited, but it's a, it's, it's a real, it's, you could send it almost. Um, and then the interesting thing is you've got this button at the bottom here that says regenerate response. So I don't like that. I just click on that and it's generated another one, which is slightly different. 
uh, and the interesting thing is once as well as being able to go back to previous conversations when this is finished there'll be a little button up here that I can flick between the two generated and if I generate four you can flick between the four of them so here once it's finished share my amazing results here sincerely my name see two click on that I, get, I can flip between them so I can see the different um, the, the different ones that are that, that are there so I mean just a just a, a, a huge amount of of capability um, and this is sort of available today um, in a different form so you can go into chat GP, get it for free but there are a number of add-ins already today and the one that I found first uh, a month ago is an interesting one called Excel Formula Bot if you search Excel Formula Bot you'll find it which is an add-in for Excel you've got to subscribe you've got to pay for this one it uses the underlying technology from um, chat GPT but you have to pay for it um, so um, but it's got an Excel add-in, so you can do it inside Excel, and you can do all the things we've been talking about. What is this? What's that? What's this formula do? Give me a formula for that. Um, so it's, I mean, this is real stuff today, and you can use it in the workflow inside Excel. And there are other ones available for that as well. And um, in the future, I mean, uh, Punit Kumar is a, a venture capitalist who's sort of saying, yeah, he's talking about the Microsoft relationship. Um, they're going to add this in everywhere and it's going to be part of the office suite i suspect and it will be remarkable what it does but just before we close it's not just obviously i mean i was writing stories about the viking leaders with horns on the inside of his helmet we're doing excel obviously it can also do things like python and um, um sql so just a couple of examples um i think i've got here if i can bring them up um yeah python yeah, there we go. Write a Python program to generate a random sequence of 10 numbers, each one at least 10 different from the previous one. Now, no one's, I, I doubt everyone's written a program like that, but there you go. It, it, a little well-documented program for doing that. You can copy and paste and run in Python um, and a little explanation of um, of why, why it works. Or going to, to SQL. So I'm saying I have a table with product sales values and sale dates in it. I want a SQL query that I should use to get the total of sales for each of the products which sold over a thousand in aggregate in 2022. Select that from table where the year of the sales date is 2020, group by product having some, I mean, it's just, it's a perfect query for exactly what I wanted. So, I mean, there's, there is, there's something in this. It is um, quite a remarkable technology. I, as I say, I suspect we will all be using it before too long. It is um, remarkable, it's a little scary, and as I say, I think it will become um, essential.